hello guys so, so today today we are going to welcome you to this new series to this new series of videos and today we are going to discuss Avahimba Avahimba also known as Himba so today we are going to discuss two of the most important traditions of the Havahimba people. Specifically then, um, um, we are going to deal with those. But let me start um, from scratch. Let me start by saying who Havahimba or um, Himba are. They um, constitute a population of over 50,000 uh, people. And the women engage in daily activity of uh, milking their cows, taking care of the children and other extensive duties. And the men go hunting, leaving them for their households for an extended period of time. Um, the Himbas. So the Himbas are known as um, polygamous people and they are known like that not so much because they are polygamous but most of the times they are known like that for a kind of a very peculiar particular tradition that they have. And this tradition is um, a very interesting tradition that uh, um, concerns Himbas and their approach their attitude towards the foreigner. Um, first off though, let me take a step back and let me go and discuss Himba marriages. Um, so Himba girls are married to male partners and those male partners are selected by their uh, fathers. So in that sense, they do not really have a say or any power over the guy uh, that they are going to marry. Um, interestingly, right, these women that seem so deprived of power, they are also the same people, the same women who um, offer sex to foreigners. There is a practice, there is a well-known um, practice in this world, a practice at least known in the world of the Avahimba and also would say in the anthropological realm and um, that is known as Okuyepisa Omukazandu treatment. This practice literally means that uh, uh, the wife is given to the guest of the tribe, to the guest of the family, to spend the night while the husband sleeps in another room. Um, in a case where there is no available room, her husband will sleep outside of the tent that constitutes the house of the family. So this tradition is an interesting one because it is said that has a lot of benefits in the community. First off, it reduces jealousy, right? Jealousy of uh, husband towards wife and also it fosters relationships. Um, the woman has little or no opinion in the decision making, right? And at the same time though, she is given the right, which I also believe it's not properly conceived as a right, but more of um, as a form of selling, um, to sleep with um, another guy the first time, the first time that guy arrives to the tribe. Now, to be completely honest, to my knowledge, she does have the right to refuse to sleep with him, but has to sleep in the same room as the guest. Okay, very interesting. Um, also, um, it is no happenstance, or so I um, believe, that um, in this tribe, um, paternity is conceived in a slightly different way from our um, a society in a sense that the father in the society is not the biological father. It's not difficult to imagine that this same tradition might have left in the past women with um, um, 
pregnancies, right? With uh, I'm not sure how much desired pregnancies, right? Therefore, the father in this society is not the biological one, but only um, the father that is so because married to that woman. And in that sense, uh, fathers um, raise um, children that are not their own biologically, which is interesting. Um, also extremely modern as a concept, um, and not properly accepted, not even in our society, and therefore um, very uh, progressive as an idea. Um, anyway, that is the first of the traditions that we want to discuss. The second one um, is um, brief um, in the sense that it's um, just interesting to mention this uh, this tradition and has to do with another rule. Another rule that uh, recites that bath is forbidden. What do we mean by that? Do these people never wash? Um, of course they do wash, but uh, um, not exactly with uh, water, let's put it that way. So um, there is a rule, right? Um, and there is a rule and this uh, rule is um, the reason why they have such a red skin. Of course that red skin is not natural, but it's the result of uh, a mixture. This is a mixture used um, to a base and it is made of Otizie paste, which is a combination of uh, butterfoot, omu zubumba scrub, and oak. And of course, oak would give off that kind of uh, color. And this color is particularly important because um, it is um, red and it is believed to be a strong reference to earth and also blood and is considered almost sacred in this society and its function is um, um, to protect the skin from the sun and insect bites um, they are also um, known um, especially here we are talking about the women um, for taking a, a smoke bath and apply aromatic resins on their skin now, with that being said, guys, I would stop here. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about those traditions. And, of course, we'll talk some more in another episode of um, this series about a different topic. So, please comment below and let me know. Remember also that I want you guys to like the video. If you truly like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and... Um, comment below let me know your thoughts let me know if you knew um, all of this or some of this and again we'll talk some more next time bye